hello welcome to this short tutorial for SDSM before we start you need to download these two files if you don't have them uh, we have the SDSM software you can follow this link to download it and the GCM the general circulation model which we'll be using for this tutorial so let me quickly take you through how you can access this uh, data the GCM data so you copy this link and you paste it you get something like this you come here statistically down scaled climate scenarios you click on it it will send you somewhere here so you select this one the CMP5 statistical downscaling then it will bring you here you can select the first file which will bring you here so i'm normally used to using the x grid cell and the y grid cell instead of the longitude and the latitude but if you don't know the grid cells the value for them you can choose to use the longitudes and the latitudes for this particular place. So I'm working on Akusa, which is around the Volta like here, lower Volta. And for my grid cell, the X X1 and the Y is 35. So you know, once I enter, it brings a box showing the location so we have a crusade if i zoom in you see that we have my steady area is falling within that grid box so you can click on retrieve data and this will appear and you download it that is good so after you download this file and you've installed your sdsn you have to create a new folder here So you create a new folder and you copy into it your raw file and what the you extract the file or the GCM data you just downloaded into the same folder. So this data should be in the dat format as you can see there the type. It should be a dat file and this is how you are supposed to arrange the data this is temperature maximum so here we are trying to represent uh, every missing value with what neg na na nine neg na na nine all right so we can close this one so let us launch our sdsm software so this is it so this software is basically used to access local climate change impacts using robust statistical downscaling technique. So this one is to facilitate the rapid development of multiple low-cost single-site scenarios of daily surface weather variables under present and future climate, climate forcing. So we are trying to access local climate change impacts with this statistical downscaling model. So we have so many tabs here, as you can see, we have the home, we have the quality control, transform data, we have the screen variable, calibrate model, weather generator, we have the summary statistics, frequency analysis, scenario generator, compare results, time series analysis, so I'll be for the purpose of this tutorial I'll be taking you through some important tabs, not all of them. For instance, we'll be looking at the quality control, the screen variable, calibre model, weather generator, uh, the summary statistics, then to the scenario generator and the last one we compare results. So let's quickly dive into the first one the quality control so this tab is basically trying to show us 
the quality of the data we have. That is, we can see the missing values, the maximum, the minimum values, the mean, and so on. A lot of them. So let's try to load in our file and check the file here. So you can see that this is my minimum value, the maximum value, the mean. This is the total number of data I have there. This is the number of missing values. The number of values which are okay is this one and a lot more. So let's try to screen our variables. So here, you know, we downloaded the GCM model. And this is the place where we are trying to screen the whole GCM models to select the file that best seals our location. So we'll be using two basic analysis here. As you can see, we have the analyze and what the correlation analysis. Here, the significance level is 5% significant level. This is the level of significance we'll be using to choose our predictors here. So we need to do some basic settings here. You know, as I showed you, my data is from 1976 to 2016. And for this tutorial, we have to change some settings here. We have to set the year length to calendar and we have to change the standard start date and the standard end date. So, you know, my GCM model, when you go into it, for the historical year, this is the end set. Uh, it starts from 1961 to 2005. So it means that if I want to really calibrate this model, I can go beyond this range. So I have to change my date from where my data starts from, which is the 1976. And I cut it short to what? 2005. So here you can set your directory where you want to work so this is supposed to be the default directly directory so you can change you can change uh, your location so that you can quickly access your files so this settings when you are working with precipitation you have to change this event threshold so this place you can change it to one if you are working with precipitation but since this tutorial we are working on temperature you have to leave it like this you save the file and we go back all right so once we have everything here this process is unconditional when you are working with temperature the process is normally unconditional for precipitation you have to choose this one conditional all right so once we have this working we need to load our observed data here then we locate our GCM model we'll go down to the end set all right so once you double click on this one it loads the predictor variables so here we have to start screening all these predictor variables there are many 20 something so you can only select the first 12 but this is how i do it so i'll select up to the first 11 so as i'm selecting you can see it is counting here so the first 11 yes then i analyze so as you can see because we are using the five percent significance level you can see that this variable was only significant in october and in december this one the second one we don't have any significant 
though it is significant, but the model is not seeing it that way. So this place to the same thing we have only November and you can see the rest. All right, so the partial this place will help us to really determine which predictor variable we need to choose. Okay, so once we correlate, it will open up something like this. So this is the correlation. But if you don't want to get confused, you can look at these two essential variables here. Yeah. We have the partial R and the P value. So this is a trick I used to select my my predictors. So you have to look for in the partial R. You have to look for uh, the highest partial R here. That will guide you to select the p value and that would also guide you to select the best predictor. So as we can see here, when we go through the partial R, we have this one, which I think is the highest value so far we have. So I open uh, my notepad and I type so this one is insert one we have the C G L okay and maybe we can also choose this one since it is the second highest and also significant so that one is and sep one z h g l okay so once we have these two selected let's go back so the reason why I don't select up to the 12 is that I normally use that one to be something like a checkpoint. So I'll select the 12 one, then deselect the rest of the predictor variables. So that I can come back and select the next 11 okay so we have the next 11 let's just correlate okay so here to the highest is this one the n set 500 gr I think we can select the second one too. So and set five TL GL. The rest I think will not help us. So let's go back and select the last. So you have to be careful when selecting these variables sometimes you get lost okay so the last portion so here to I think the last two variables are very good and we can select them So once we are done here, we know our variables to select for the calibration. We can simply move to the calibration. So here you have to maintain these 
settings just as they are sometimes if you want to do auto regression you can do it if you want to calculate the count test it, you can try it so let us try to load our data so you have to set an output file let's call this one cow calibration so here we have to still go down to the NCEP folder and we look for the files we screened the one those ones we selected so let's try to look for them this one I think we have the G okay this one we have the 500 GL and uh, this one okay maybe the last two good so basically we have six of them the data written is okay so we can calibrate our model good so once your model is calibrated you can see the r square for each month here and this is the standard error for each month and the dubbing maxing also here for each month so you can see our predictors here so it is unconditional but let's go back so once we are done with this one we have to model our data with the weather generator so here we select the calibrated file we can view the details from this side so this one we can call it the weather gen which is the model that is the raw file we want to model for now so you have to select the NSEP data here once you are done then you synthesize okay so once we are done with the synthesis we can then move on to the scenario generator so this is where we want to generate the future scenarios for this particular TCM model so here you have to adjust your settings to suit your future scenario so here we don't work with the calendar years here we omit the leap year so you have to select the 365 days and this particular model when you look at the future future scenarios start from 2006 to 2100 so we have to adjust our years like that so 2006 uh, sorry let us keep it 2000 for now because it will give me errors if I don't work on this one 2100 and this one is what 2006 so we can save it Then we can load our calibrated file, you can view it here. So for now we want to generate the first scenario which is the RCP 2.6. So let us label our file as such, RCP 2.6. And you have to locate that folder rcp 2.6 this is it so we are locating it afterwards we generate yes you click on yes okay so we have to do same for rcp 
don't forget to change the folder to 4.5 then you generate We do the same for the RCP 8.5. The same way we generate. So once we are done, we move on to the summary statistics here. So this place basically we want to do some statistics to see whether our model our model is trying to predict well, especially the calibrated data, which is the observed. Then afterwards we move on to the scenarios. So once you click on the statistics, we have so many statistics here. This conditional ones is for precipitation, but these ones are generic. So for now, we will be using the first five for now for the temperature. So we'll be working on the first one, that is the weather generated one. So you go to your file, you select the weather generated one. You come here, let us save this one to historical model. So this one is trying to convert the file we have into a readable format. Yeah, something like that. So we can view the details of the file here. So don't also forget to change the years here so this one was 1970 1976 2005 so once you are done you click on analyze Alright, so this is the statistics which we will be looking at later. So let's do the same for our observed. So you know, once I'm moving on to the observed, I change the data source from model to uh, the observed. So let us select. So you see here, I'm not having my observed file here. It is because of the file format within which I'm working so I have to change it to the that format so I'm having my file here so let's change the name to observe and save it so the same here for this one you cannot view the details once it is not model so it is okay so let us try to analyze all right, so we have this one. So once we are done with these ones, we have to do the same for the scenarios. So you move it on back to the model. Then the first one, RCP 2.6. So let us label it as RCP 2.6. So don't forget to change your years back to the future scenarios so this is 2006 so once everything is done you can view this one to analyze Alright, 
So let's change it to the two point four point five. Let's change our level to four point five. Then we analyze again. Okay, so the last one, the 8.5, we analyze. So once it is done, we then move on to compare results. So basically this is the place where we can compare the results of the model, then the observed and the scenarios we just did. So we select the files, the observed, the historical, so we can select from the statistics. So let's use the mean for now, then you click on bar. So as you can see, this is the resource for the model and the observed, and it is looking so perfect. So you can try changing some of the settings for the resource. For instance, these ones you can change it to observe you can change this one to, to observe you can change the label for the x and y so this one is well and the y okay so yes let's leave it that way this one we can remove it yeah so you can try to make all these changes you can adjust even this number to maybe maybe 65 then we make the changes My Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. You don't have to click on the close whenever you are working with this. So we should go back and do it again. So all that. Historical model. Mean. Number. Okay, so we are back here. So we can change it again. This one, maybe sixty-five. All right. So here we don't use. Uh, I've repeated myself again. So let me try to do it again. But for me, I don't normally use uh, these settings due to how ugly the diagram is looking like. Uh, so let me try, let me try. Don't ever use this sign here. So once you make the changes, the change to click here close then we have it working now so if you want to copy these raw values you click here copy so you go to excel 
and you can paste it here yes so it is here I normally like using Excel instead of uh, this ugly ugly diagram uh, okay the same way so we can copy this one too we paste it here come okay so the last one I'm trying to bring all the files into Excel so I have to copy again so I paste here very good so this is repeating delete delete this one too and move this one towards here so if you want to change maybe the bars you don't like the bars to maybe lines you can select lines you know it's the same thing here all right so let's go to our excel so first we want to work on or see how our model is performing comparing the observed and the model so let's take this one out so let's try to plot this one here so as you can see the model is performing very well it is performing very well so we can also adjust these levels again okay so let us see how these ones are also performing. Alright, so just as it has been predicted that these are extremes, the LCP 8.5 are extremes. So we can see that they are rising throughout the months. So this one is from 2006 to 2100. So this is it. And we can also try to plot all of them. So let's copy this one. Copy this one and plot all of them. So here we are for the four of them. So we've successfully downscaled our GCM model to a local site, local single site, which is the Akuse. And I think with this one, you are good to go. So this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye-bye.